for this lesson, we're going to begin looking at factoring. And factoring is going to be a major component of Unit 4 and just Grade 10 in general. So up until this point, we have been going from brackets and multiplying out to an expanded form. This here is called expanding. So expand and then we simplify. You could just write expanding, but I just don't want you to forget the really important step of collecting your like terms. So up until this point, we've been expanding. And we've learned some shortcuts to expanding and some tricks, and we've been really practicing that. But more often than not, we're going to be asked to go backwards. So instead of expanding, we want to figure out what the brackets were before we multiplied them out. And this is called factoring. So this little warm up above gives, an, gives us an example as when we would use factoring. So in this case, we know the area of the park, it's 16x squared minus 4x, and we're given the length but we want to figure out width, right? So in this case, we want to go backwards to figure out what our length and width were before we started, right? And basically, for our example here, we have area equals length times width. We know our area was 16x squared minus 4x equals my length multiplied by my width. So the idea is that we want to think about what w was before it was multiplied in. So what would be multiplied in here in order to get w? At this stage, the only way you can really think about it is what would 4x be multiplied by to get 16x? So we would have 4x again, and then to get negative 4x would have minus 1. Now, that works, but in reality, we won't always be given that length. And there are other options that we could use. So the idea is that we need to use this factoring in order to find length and width always. So we're going to start slowly because there's a few different types of factoring and there's some very important steps. So the first type of factoring is common factoring. So for today, we're not going to fully go from that expanded form to the brackets. We're just really doing the first step. And this first step is going to be one of the most important ones that we do when we're factoring. So basically what common factoring is, is I'm going to be looking through my expression and I want to find a number that goes into all of the terms. So similar to how we were multiplying in monomials or what you did in grade nine, we're doing that backwards. And I'll give you a little bit of an explanation of what I mean by that. So we have some steps here. I'm going to read through them here and then we'll go through an example. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the largest number that goes into the coefficient of every term. As a reminder, the coefficient is that big number that's beside the variable. And then what we want to do is we want to look at the variables in every single term. And we want to figure out what is the biggest exponent that they all share. I'll show you what that means in a minute because it's a little confusing. And then we want to use this greatest common factor that we found and divide everything by it. So here's our example. We'll put those steps into practice. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at all of our coefficients here. And by coefficients, I mean 18, 9, and 3. So we want to think about what number goes into 18, 9, and 3. And ideally, you want to find the largest number 
that goes into 18, 9, and 3. So if I think about it, my biggest number is going to be 3. Next, I want to look at my variables. So I have an x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, and x. So the next thing I want to do is I need to look at my exponents on there. And if I look, this first term has x to the power of 3. So in other words, it has three x's to potentially give away. The second term has x to the power of 2, so it potentially has two x's to get rid of. And my final one is x to the power of 1, so it only has one x to give away. So because it only has one x to potentially give away, that is going to limit us to just x to the power of 1. So my highest exponent is 3, but on that first one, I'm limited by 1. And that's basically what we're really looking for. So that means that my greatest common factor is my 3 and x to the power of 1. And you'll see why that matters in a moment. So what we're going to do now is we are going to common factor out 3x. So the first thing we do is we're going to take that 3x and we're going to put it in front of the brackets. The reason why we do that is so that we can multiply it back in after. So because we've taken 3x out, we're going to divide everything by 3x. So again, we're going to reference our exponent laws here. So we start by dividing our coefficients. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. And now we look at our x's. So we have x to the power of 3 divided by x. So we subtract our exponents. So we'll have x squared. And then we do the same with the 9. So we divide our coefficients. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then we are going to divide our variables. So x squared divided by x, we subtract our coefficients, so we just have x. And then 3x divided by 3x is just 1. So what you can also do here, which is very, very handy, is we can check our answer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do this in red just so you can see the difference here, is we can check our answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check by multiplying in this 3 to see if we get what we originally had. If I did everything right, I should get what I originally had. So let's multiply in that 3. 18x cubed plus 9x squared plus 3x. So because I got what I originally started with, I know I did it right, and I can move on. So if you have extra time on a test or a quiz or an assignment, you can always double check. Make sure it's when you have extra time so you get to everything on your test. But in general, you can always check with these, which is really, really handy. So we're going to do a few examples here. So we're going to start by factoring the following polynomials. So the first thing we want to do is find our greatest common factor. So again, we look at the coefficients and find the largest number that goes into my coefficient. So in this case, with 15 and 10, we're going to have 5. And then I look at my variables. So the first term has two x's to give, and the second one only has 1. So that limits us at 1. So now what I do, I put that 5x on the outside so I can multiply it back in, and I divide everything by 5x. So 15 divided by 5 will give me 3, and then I'm going to use my exponent laws. So x squared divided by x, we subtract our exponents, so I'm just left with x. And then 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then my x's, I keep the base, but I subtract my exponent, so I'll have x to the power of 0, which is just 1.
So that's my final answer. Now, again, to be sure about our answers, we can always just check it. So you don't need to do this for every one, but I find it really helps you to understand what we're doing when you multiply it out again after. So you can see that this works, right? So what we're doing is we'll multiply back that five in. So this is why it's so important to put the five on the outside so that I can multiply it back in after. So that will give us 15 X squared plus 10 X. So if you don't get that answer again, it means that you've made a mistake somewhere. So that is your red flag that I need to go back and adjust what I've done. So we're going to do a few trickier ones. So the second one, let's find our greatest common factor. So I look at all my coefficients, negative 16, negative 24, and 8. So the first thing you want to do is make sure they're in order. That's step one. So I look at my exponents, I have 4, 3, 2, which means we're good to go and they're in order. The next thing I want to do is I want to look if that first term is negative. If it is negative, I always want to pull out that negative. So even if it's just a negative 1, it doesn't matter. If the first number is negative, I'm going to common factor it out always. So I'm going to take that negative out. And then I look at the numbers and I want to figure out which number goes into 16, 24, and 8. And what we're going to look at is you're going to think, okay, so 4 does, that works. But we want to find the biggest one. So we're going to take out 8. Now we're going to look at our variables. So I have x to the power of 4. So that first term has 4x's to give me. My second term has three x's to give me. And finally, my last term only has two. So that two limits how many x's I can take out or divide by in that term. So that means I can only take out x squared. So again, we put x8, negative 8x squared on the outside. That way, later on, we can multiply it back in if I want to get back to that other form. And now I'm just going to divide out that negative 8x squared from all of these. Okay, so negative 16 divided by negative 8, that's just going to give me positive 2. And now we look at the variables. So x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 2. I keep my base and I subtract my exponents. So we're left with 2x squared. And now we're going to do the same thing with our next term. So negative 24 divided by negative 8 is going to give me positive 3. And now we look at our variables. x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 2. So we're just left with x. And then finally, 8 divided by negative 8 is negative 1. And then x squared divided by x squared is just 1. So we're just left with negative 1. And then... You can check your answer for homework it is really beneficial to check your answer just so that you know that you're doing it right and it helps you to visualize the whole process so why we're doing this and actually why it works instead of just memorizing the steps we know why it's happening so this part helps you to visualize that a little bit so if I multiply that back in I'll have negative 16 x to the 4. We're adding our exponents here. Negative 24 x to the 3 my plus 8 x squared. So there are a few more to try below. Give them a try and see how it goes. And then double check your answers, which will be posted online.